Number 30 is a quarterback you mentioned in our opening discussion. Number 30 on your list is Lamar Jackson. Um, I, hey, anybody that's been listening to me knows that I've been a huge defender of Lamar Jackson going back to when Bill Polian came out and said, ah, he's a receiver in the NFL. I thought that was completely disrespectful. Okay. Lamar Jackson is, he is certainly worthy of being an NFL starting quarterback or has a skill set to do that. You know, great rookie year. I mean, what did he go? Six and one, right? Yep. He um, did, as a starter. I mean, they went on a run there at the end of the year. Uh, now there's of course the athleticism I love, uh, some of the throws I love. He shows potential to be a special passer at times. I mean, the one thing I love about him is he can just flick his wrist and throw it 45, 50 yards. It's effortless. You know, when people are going across the middle of the field, he's got a great way. He can throw it sidearm and dip down and throw at different angles. You know, natural that way. But yet, there's lots of inconsistencies in his technique and his throwing off of that, too, where I'd go, yes, yeah, for every one of those, ooh, that was a cool throw, I could show you two throws to go, everything's perfect here, and he should hit the bullseye, and he didn't hit anything on the bullseye. He could have kept it simple. He could have, right. And he didn't. Right. He made yeah. the guy go down, and, you know, here's a game, there's a guy running an out route, and if he throws it on target, it's going to be a 20 yard gain because the guy's going to run after the catch right. and said he's got to go to the ground and catch it, or he doesn't catch it at all because it gets skipped on the ground. So there's major issues with technique and consistency in his throwing. That's my big concern with Lamar Jackson. In fact, I said this today on the show. I don't know if there's really a team Lamar Jackson could have started for last year other than the Baltimore Ravens. Maybe the New England Patriots because yeah. I think they could have figured out a way to run the Wildcat type of offense with him as well. But sure. uh, I look at Baltimore as being one of the few scenarios and team that had the talent around him to make the intricate, you know, very creative run scheme where they can dominate people up front because they have a great offensive line and not have to depend on being a 50-50 balanced team of throwing the football either. They're one of the rare teams, if not the only team in football, that I think could have managed that type they of situation. They did. They figured it out last year. They, they had did. Marty Mornenweg, although he has been replaced by Greg Roman, who was with the, the team, and he was basically the run game coordinator. And yeah. So he was the right. reason that they were able to do a lot of that stuff. Greg Roman was the offensive coordinator back when I was in the Bay Area for the 49ers, and he coached Colin Kaepernick and yeah, some of those right. high-flying offenses. That were that were pretty equal, you know. Running quarterback, yes. and you, you ran a lot. Sometimes Colin would have more rushing yards than he would have passing yards. Right. But they would win That's by a couple okay. touchdowns. That's and, right. I'm not all into here about the passing yards and everything like that. It's not all about that. But what do you think about the the Ravens owner? Just recently told the season ticket holders that go, he goes, "quote I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Lamar is not going to be running 20 times a game. That's not what the offense is about." And so he is indicating that they kind of want to get away from the. The Lamar running, you know, 100 yards again. He ran over 90 yards like three times last yes, year. Threw right. over 200 just once right. last year. So yeah. what, what do you uh, think of that comment? Well, um, the first thing I think of is it's always good to hear the owners coaching the team. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's the first thing I honestly yeah. think about. But no, in all in all honesty, he he's right. I mean, we can't depend. You can't expect that guy. Lamar Jackson. Is, but you shouldn't take that away. No, they right. got to still do it. Lamar Jackson has to be good at uh, knowing when to put his body on the line in certain runs. But yeah, to consistently ask him to carry the ball 20 times a game, yeah, that's just just that's a little too much. You know, 10 to 15 times a game, okay, that might be manageable. Right. Um, but yeah, you're 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 risking a lot by playing that style of football, where we know, hey, the NFL is as physical as it comes. Linebackers, safeties are faster than ever. Defense ends, all of that. And Lamar Jackson, as good as he was at running, you know, hey, it still didn't look like Louisville last year when he was running around because right. yeah, the, the talent gap is different. You know, the big thing with Lamar Jackson, just got to continue to see the passing game grow. You know, I just don't, and as much as I like Greg Roman and his creative ways of running the football, all of that, you know, of course, Baltimore is going to be studied this year. Teams are going to look at what they did. You know, everybody in their divisions, of course, going to study them, and they got to play it last year, so they're going to be a little bit prepared. Mm -hmm. You know, just to sit there and think, oh, we're the Baltimore Ravens, and we're going to be, you know, a 70-30 run team. No, there's just no way that they can be good week after week they after week and be a playoff a team. To they have ball. to find a way to keep defenses backed off. Not that they have to be thrown for 300 yards, but just enough to where it's going to scare teams to where they go, okay, we can't put eight guys in the box to stop the right. run game because Lamar can gash us with the, with the pass game. And they helped them out there with getting a few weapons in Hollywood Brown and Miles Boykin in the draft at the wide receiver position. I got a quick game for you. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, yeah. Lamar Jackson, he's 22 years old. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if, if he is older. I'm going to quiz you on if he is older or some of these recent uh, draft picks that we just saw okay. uh, a couple months ago. Okay. So who, who's older? 
Uh, Lamar Jackson or Auburn quarterback Jarrett Stidham, who was just drafted this past year? I'm going to say Jarrett Stidham. Five months older is Jarrett Stidham. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Uh, how about West Virginia quarterback Will Greer, Ooh. who was drafted? Well, Will Greer is he transferred from Florida, so I'm going to say he's older as well. Two years older. Two Will years Greer's older. Two years older. Holy <laughs> cow, he's 24 already? Uh, Ryan Finley, who was at NC State. Just drafted this past year. Oh, I feel like he's younger and you're throwing me a curveball here, and I have no idea. I just was guessing. Ryan Finley is two years older than Lamar Damn, Jackson. Damn, he's two years older, too. So that, 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 these are good. Who your else? boy, Your boy, Drew Locke. Yeah. Denver Broncos just took him in the second round. I'm going to say, what, is he a year older? Drew Locke is two months older than Lamar Jackson. Oh, okay. so, so a little Drew's closer a little right younger there. For his, okay, okay. And finally, Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is two years older. Four months younger. Four months younger. Then, yeah, he's actually <laughs> younger than Lamar Jackson. But it, it just goes to show, it's like, when you compare him as a guy who is 22 years old and yes. doing what he did and already won six games where he started seven in a playoff game where he didn't play too bad and right. kept them in the game, yeah. it, it's, it's just like, wow, he did that all as a 22-year-old who's still got room to grow. Definitely has room to grow. Uh, and, I mean, again, I'm rooting for him. I just, you know, again, I think the reason I don't have him rated higher because I think if you looked at six and one, went to the playoffs, you know, as a rookie, all good. I get it. But I just got to see more in the passing game first before I can put mm -hmm. him there. You know, like I said, I don't know if there's another team he could have played like that for last year where they could, still could have won games. I mean, the Ravens were one of the best defenses in football. It's one of the biggest, most overpowering offensive lines in all of football. Right. They know how to manage the game that way to win those ugly type of games to go along with it. Uh, so well, I, I'm just hoping Lamar fixes some of those issues. He has some true mechanical flaws. And that's what has to be fixed. I talked about some of the things he does that are so effortless and look good, but does not keep a great base about him when he drop backs to pa drops back to pass in the pocket. You know, you got to keep your feet wide so you're in a throwing position. He lets his feet get real narrow. Also doesn't really step into throws a lot of the times. The, the first yeah. the step is like five or six inches. And I'm going to go, how do you expect to get power on the ball that way? And people hear you say that, and they go, okay, well, just fix it. But sometimes it's not that easy. It's not that easy. Sometimes players cannot fix and nobody, it. And he's an enigma. No, nobody, nobody knows who was coaching him in the, the pre-draft process. You know, this year there's talk, oh, he went down to Florida to work with the guy that works with his quarterback. Nobody knows who the guy is. Yeah. I don't know who he's working with. And from everything, if this is the same guy that was working with him before the combine, he ain't telling him the right thing. So he needs to change the guy. I can just tell you that much. Because he locks out his front leg, too, as he throws. When you lock out your front leg, that usually makes the upper body kind of flinch forward or lean forward. It, throw, it goes to some worm burners. Worm burners are balls that skip on the ground, okay? Yeah. Uh, there's too many of those. And th those are things he's going to have to clean up. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.